Hello, welcome to this episode of Demystified as we explore home cooking in a modern world. I'm Linda and I'm here with my friend Paul. Paul Turning all their phones on silent really quickly. <laughs> Paul who just pointed to my uh, to my phone which wasn't on silent and which could have gone off at Rookie. any minute. Rookie. So thank you Paul. I know. <laughs> after, after all these years you'd think I'd know yeah. to uh, make sure everything's up. I did turn my phone over oh, as good. if that was going to make any difference if it rang. How are you going? What's cooking? Well, not much. How about you? Yeah, not a, not a great deal today. Paperwork and emails and all the rest of it. But I think I'm going to go on a bit of a soup mission. A soup mission? Yeah. You're inspired? Well. Wouldn't yeah. you go that far? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I think we might crank out a few soup recipes, I think. I think now's the time. I mean, I know. For people overseas, they're going into summer, but whatever. But we're, still, where um, we are, where we are. One of my favourite soups is a soup from Spain, in the okay. north of Spain, and it's a ajo blanco. It's a garlic white soup. Okay. Fantastic, and it's chilled, and they serve it with uh, often grapes at the bottom. But it's just this lovely mild garlic flavoured it's just everything yeah we've talked <sighs> about it. this before though. I know we have like and well we've talked about yeah. sometimes it's where you are that makes things and well, the situation you're in I've never found in Australia that we're big on cold soups no because if you look at like one of the I'm sure that's probably a classic and been done for a long time but one of the, probably one of the moments that I went, mm, okay, French cooking's for me, was when I had my first proper, proper vichyssoise, which is potato and leek. But properly, it's cold. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we, here we don't, it's not a thing like for us in Australia so much. No. Chilled soups. Like, they're Maybe really good. Maybe gazpacho or one of those sort of... Yeah, but even then, bigger, but like, yeah. it's not... No, you don't get them at restaurants. It's not common and, and... Yeah. I mean, that being said, I haven't been out to a lot of restaurants over no. the past, like, two years. But nonetheless, like, I just don't think it's a common thing. So I don't think we'll go down that path. So it probably doesn't have a lot to do with ovens. But no, but, but I think <clears throat> what we've discovered is that uh, we need to use all of our appliances in our oh, kitchen very good, pool, Linda. not just the steam oven. Yeah. And as we know, we've got this wonderful oven that can cook whole veggies that are great for making soups. Yep. So roasting them. We might go down that path. I, okay. I think. Well, I don't know what I'll do. A bit of an exploratory market visit, and over the weekend I'm going to do that. I'm going to take some time and just not have my work head on and just seems I open up my eyes a little bit more sometimes when it's not for work oh yes so yes well, we've talked about that too sometimes it's you know sometimes it's not the right night to cook or the right day to cook you should just walk away do something else find something else so yeah I'm kind of in that at the minute but I think a nice wander around the market tomorrow will do me good and to see what's what but yeah I think we'll do some soup so if anyone's got any requests let us know this is the time yeah because we can you know bash out the recipe reasonably quickly if it works <laughs> <laughs> if it does great if, if it doesn't it, yeah. we'll never hear about yeah, it yeah you'll never see it they just don't exist the blooper well, reels so. Dougie and I did go out for dinner last night to celebrate our 36th oh, anniversary go. how's that for Someone who's only... Staying power. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, he doesn't like change. Yeah. So we went out to a restaurant and uh, he booked... Um, it was a little Mexican place. That's right. Yeah. Locally. And I was pretty excited because I do... One of my faves is Mexican food. Yeah. And But it was interesting because it had a really limited menu, which I, I really like in restaurants because it means that they're focusing on what they do really, really well. Mm-hmm. And these guys did their limited menu really, oh, really good. well. There wasn't, we had a, that was tacos and little uh, shells, which were um, 
soft shell tacos, tortillas, yep. and the shells were lettuce leaf mm. filled with um, goodies. And, that, and we tried a few. There was pork, duck, uh, spicy chicken. Yeah. But all of them had an Asian influence. Yeah. Which was fantastic. Mm. And it, we just, it was just the, like a fantastic meal, a real surprise. We didn't know, I didn't know what to expect, but I did like, you know, these sort of smaller um, servings. Yeah. Because for the people around us that were, you know, there were tables of four and tables of six and lots of takeaways, these great big uh, boards had come out and platters had come out with all these uh, little tacos on them, the soft shell ones or the shells in yeah. the lettuce leaves. And the food was light. The food was extremely tasty, and one of the one of the ones that uh, one of the dishes that we tried had a dipping sauce of sweet miso and lime, mm. which was sensational. And then sriracha and mayo, like just sriracha nice. mayo. Yeah, can't go wrong there. You can't go wrong with those yeah. two, and miso and lime. Miso and lime, which was an eye opener. Yeah, miso is an interesting ingredient. It's not something that most people, I don't think, would cook with here unless you've oh. had some Japanese. Yeah, it's quite used for. It's. I mean, it's used in. I use it in dressings a bit. I find it handy in dressings because it's a savoury flavour bomb. So salty. It can be. Mm. Yeah. So this. I mean, there's lots of different versions. White miso. Oh yes. Sweet. Yes. So you know, there's. I think some we have that, some are, white miso vinegar. Or dressing in our yeah. which came from cooking with steam a little while ago. Yeah, um, thank you. Cooking with steam. Yeah, some lots of different uses for it. Um, I don't particularly like the sweet side of miso. It's not my thing. So quite often it's used in desserts. Um, I've never found it to be, and maybe I'm just having the wrong desserts, but I've never found it to be something that's. Good, but it's good for a like flavor bombing, a bit of an umami umami bomb in stuff. It was sensational with yeah. uh, as a dipping sauce. Yeah, and it, that's one ingredient which I can tell people: you get what you pay for. So buy good miso. How can you tell? Price. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Price well, does uh, reflect. Honestly, okay. in that situation, especially with things like so, if you go to a Asian grocer or an international grocer or something like that quite often you'll see um, the packaging or the labeling on the packaging of whatever it is that you're buying very little of it will be written in English most of the time the stuff that is in English will be the ingredients because I think they have to um, but the rest of it tells you unless you can speak Japanese um, or can read Japanese the rest of it tells you very little I it took me a while to find which I thought was the good miso for me, and I generally just go back and, and buy that one often. But there's a soup. Like, it couldn't be easier. Miso soup. Like, it's very, very simple. You make a dashi stock, which is dry bonito, a little bit of, like, kelp seaweed. Um, you essentially infuse the kelp into water, add dried bonito flakes, like a lot of them, and that's another pricey ingredient, but nonetheless... Um, remove the kelp, add the bonito flakes, strain that off. There's the base, add some miso, whisk it through, drop in some diced tofu and other bits and pieces if you like, and that's miso soup. That's as difficult as it is, but it's all down to the dashi stock, which is the base stock. And okay. dried bonito flakes are, the good ones are very expensive, very, very expensive. So. Okay, so what's a bonito flake? What's it? Well, bonito's top of fish. Okay. Yeah, okay. so it's related so to the okay, so. tuna family. Ah, okay. Thanks. And they dry it, and then it's mm -hmm. shaved very, very finely. Like, it's it's lighter than paper. It's really, really light. Um, and it essentially infuses in a stock. So I think kind of, and I don't know the right term, but the sort of one of the fu fundamental base stocks for Japanese cookery is a dashi stock which is essentially water that gets infused with dried seaweed 
And the trick with that is to not leave it in there too long. So it's a very brief amount of time. And it's this like dried kelp. It's really, really dry. Quite often the surface is white and salty. Um, you drop that into some just simmering water, leave it in there. I can't remember how long. I think it's somewhere between 10 and sort of 12 minutes and then remove it. And then if you see Japanese chefs, when they add banana flakes, they're not shy, right? You don't add a pinch. Like you add handfuls. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and that's like a base for a lot of different um, soups and sauces and all sorts of different stuff. We did chow and mushy a while mm-hmm. ago. So that's a like really silky egg, cu- savory egg custard, which is steamed, which is, mm-hmm. and it's a Japanese thing. And within that is the dashi stock. Oh, okay. I couldn't try any of that because you also added uh, Yeah, just to, to that one. But you could omit them, right? The recipe is a know, guideline, but I, but Linda. No, it was, but I just Linda, I couldn't. Linda, recipe is a but I, guideline. I, no, it's not. It's that absolute <laughs> process written in concrete. You know that. Yeah. But I couldn't even try it, so I sort of tuned out a bit. When you, that's uh, worth one, that's one for you to try actually at home because that is really quite delicious and that that's probably a really good representation of how you get good texture through excellent con- temperature control and steam like okay. it's re- and it's super silky like it's not to everyone's taste and I know a lot of um, I think you can add like um, prawns and all sorts all manner of different bits but quite often there's maybe something added to the pot that you steam in so it's almost like a little bowl right um so some people add some seafood or whatever and then pour the custard it's essentially a custard mix or the egg mix over the top and then once it's steamed it'll get garnished with all manner of different things you can pretty much do with it what you like and sometimes that's re-steamed just briefly to warm those ingredients up sometimes it's not um but the point being is that Dashi stock is a key part of that. And also whisking your eggs, not with a whisk or a fork, with chopsticks is super important. Okay. Because you don't want to get bubbles in it. You don't want to aerate it. You're trying to mix them, but you're trying to not aerate them. Okay. Hmm. But dashi stock, like, yeah, get on that. That's really good. And for, like, you want the quickest soup in the world, miso soup is probably it. It's super flavorful. It's like four ingredients, really. And it's delicious. Once you've made the stock. Yeah, but the stock's 15 minutes. Like, it's okay. 20 minutes. Dushy stock, it's not a three-hour experience. Oh, okay. At all. Like, bring your water up to temp, add your kelp or seaweed, um, let that infuse for a few minutes, bring it back up to the boil, add up handfuls of bonito flakes, another couple of minutes, strain it off, dushy stock done. It's not a long process. Okay, and then add your miso. Then add your, then whisk in and miso, then, yeah. and that it's it's effectively that's miso soup. Quite often we used to, and I worked in a Japanese restaurant briefly. But quite often we used to add very small cubes of um, like semi-firm tofu, not silken tofu, but firm tofu. And I think we added another type of seaweed from memory. I can't remember now. And that was our miso soup, and we used to serve that as a little starter to like a bento box or something like that for lunch. But miso soup, it's making my mouth water because I haven't had it in so long, but miso soup's delicious. Really, really quick. But the trick is good base ingredients. Good bonito flakes, good miso paste. Okay. So you, we're on soup. So it's are good. you going to, uh, while you're going over to the market then, go to the Asian grocery? I've got some miso here. at home. Oh, I have always you? have miso at home. You always do. Of course you do. I never do. Well, I use it in, I make, I use it in dressings. Oh, um, okay, of course. I'll, I'll put it sometimes if I remember. Sometimes I'll put a like teaspoon of miso in my uh, bolognese sauce, just really? for a bit of salt and umami. Yep, it's not not enough to taste, but it just gives that savoury note. Wow. Okay. Soy sauce works the same too. Okay. Not to the same level, but soy sauce goes in my bolognese sauce at home. Do you put milk in your bolognese sauce? Absolutely. See. Yeah. Okay then. Well, that's um. That's anyway. interesting. No, well. Yeah. But I, I, I must say the um, the dinner we had last night, having a thinking a taco and thinking the traditional sort of. Yeah, we're covering mix, the globe today, aren't we? But <laughs> French vichyssoise, sort of like, Japanese miso, but, tacos. But with an Asian flavour, so all mm. the salady vegetables were 
of an Asian mix and the yeah. dips were definitely of an Asian flavour and they were sensational. Like, so is it a Mexican restaurant or is it an Asian restaurant or what is it? So this is a good thing. I like that. Like oh, it often doesn't work. Right? I, rem- I Part of my career was right through the big sort of fusion where Asian fusion became a thing, you know, and, and using sort of classical technique and trying to bring Asian ingredients into mm, probably places that shouldn't have gone. Um, so it's interesting to see people doing that but now it's been more refined I think a lot a lot better so yeah oh well, I might have but to give was, that a go uh, it was I really really enjoyed it and as I said I, I always get impressed by restaurants that are brave enough to have a small menu yeah but you know my theory on that but like, what they I've do always what they do well better. yeah what I, they do I'd much well. rather have a small menu changing often um, than a big menu that you know takes you weeks to print the menu and you change two dishes and it gets a bit boring sometimes so and like most restaurants in melbourne at the moment and i'm sure in most other places they had half the restaurant open because they can't get staff yes the critical staff shortage that i'm sure is endemic across the world at the moment but certainly certainly in in hospitality Oh, in every industry yeah. that we can think of, there's, there's critical shortages. But it was fantastic, and I was uh, really pleased that uh, we went there. And I thought it had just opened, and I said, have you been here long? Thinking, okay, I know I'm a bit like Rumpelstiltskin. Sometimes I wake up and things have changed. They've been there since 2015, and we're just discovering <laughs> it now. <laughs> and, and it's down the road, really. And it's literally down the road, and we're like, What? Anyway, that's yeah. funny. That's a different story. I'm sure other people suffer from that too. Yeah. But uh, so there you are. So Very soup good. making for you. Yep, soup for me. Excellent. Well, I'm. I thought I'd try the pizza. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm going to do that too because we didn't do it last weekend. So <laughs> yeah. We're so gonna, we're gonna, fantastic. I'll go to the deli. I said to my little fellow, "You can, we'll make pizzas and I'll get all sorts of ingredients." And I said, "You can put on it whatever you want." And he, the first thing he said to me was chocolate. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not chocolate. But, yeah. And then he said bacon, and I said yes. So Excellent. He's, he knows that bacon is a good thing. Oh, yes. Well, a lot of good things house, come from bacon. I was going to say, coming yeah. from your household, I'm sure he's got a pretty broad good thing taste. Yeah. But, yes. Excellent. Cool. Well, have a good weekend. And, and you. Happy cooking. Happy soup cooking. Yes. Happy cooking everywhere. Yes. So, everybody, have a great weekend. Even your Mexican-Asian cooking. Thanks for listening. So take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this podcast as we explore home cooking in a modern world. We'd love you to subscribe. And for more information, please go to our website, cookingwithsteam.com.